following is a presentation of the National Racing Network. Field is now fired and getting into their proper starting spots. Nick Skias starting 16th. He'll be one to watch for in the number 88 Viper chassis car. Brand new right rear on, on the car. You can see the sticker rolling around there. He chooses to uh, start last in most of these main events and put a challenge personally on himself, <laughs> really, yeah. to see how uh, good he can do every night. And I know I was here a couple weeks ago, and he started 16th and almost won it. And lost in about the last 200 feet coming off of turn number four. Yeah, he said that night that he, he really had to, like, work with the throttle. The car kept shutting off on him. Yeah, he and, said he um, had too much fuel. Yeah, and just didn't quite lift, I guess, enough times. Burp it. I always call it burping the throttle. Didn't do that quite often enough and, and um, lost it <laughs> in the final <laughs> quarter lap. Lost the race. We are agreeing, though. Nick is still the point leader, and he is looking to hang on to that top spot in the standings. And they are charging down the back chute. We are watching mid-pack Toby Blumenshine. Oh, look out. A couple of cars getting together, a little mix-up, a little jingle off turn four. Everybody able to continue and will continue. Mid-pack, though, Toby Blumenshine, the 36M and the 21V of Dave Ravel were making some moves on the outside. And they have already punched their way into the top five. 21V of David Ravel absolutely running the wall here. Man, keeping his momentum up. And uh, he's, he started back in 12th, and now he is currently passing for third here on lap number four. What a run. Yeah, Patrick Kern, the 16P there. You got a good look at him. He is the race leader, and there is that. Fantastic action going on behind Patrick Kern. 36M of Blumenshine, the 88K of Kane Rogers. He has also won here this year. Corey Murky getting into the backstretch wall there. He's able to keep going in front of his younger brother, Noah. The Murky brothers racing off through turns number one and two. And we got a yellow. Oh, Nick Skias losing a left front wheel. Well, that's not good. That's not good for the point lead. Bouncing down the back stretch there, it looks like the entire spindle and hub assembly broke off the front axle. Wow. That is definitely not going to help him there in the points. Now, he came into this event leading Toby Blumenshine by 55 points. And with double points on the line, and Nick's going to finish way back. Actually going to be the first car out of the that race could here. be trouble. Yeah, but that is going to be trouble. Tough break for Nick Skias. Getting Blue a good look there at yeah. the front axle. It looks like the uh, spindle snout just snapped off. It lo yeah. actually looks snapped off right there. You can kind you of see it. the end of the, oh yeah, the spindle, that's right. Yeah, it looks like part of it's still I was looking at the end of the axle, but yeah, that spindle is there. Wow. Tough break. Yeah, the tire's bouncing on the racetrack. no one else hit that. I mean, that is definitely yeah, that, a lot. It's a good amount of weight at that speed to hit. Right. Oh, yeah. You don't want to hit that tire. And you're looking. I was just using Nick's car as, a, as an example. The distance between the top of the hood and the top of the roll cage. I mean, it, I don't know that it's going to get inside the roll cage, but it, it's good. That's scary. It's if a tire's pretty close, coming yeah. at you head on. Yeah. Bouncing like that. So a tough break for the number 88, Nick Skias. Field bunched up, two by two. Six laps complete, still a long way to go, 29 laps remaining. And this may have been exactly what Dave Ravel was looking for, the 21V. You mentioned started 12th, he is up to third, yeah. right behind the race leader. Here we go. Back to green. Ricky Seacrest has been doing a great job in the runner-up spot, but Dave Ravel's gonna make short work of Ricky. Ravel quickly taking position number two when we've got trouble near the back of the pack. Yellow again. Corey and Murky we still, there. yeah, still in the same lap. Excuse me, Ron. Corey Murky sideways there and uh, got tagged by Sammy Sh Sh yeah. Shank. Shank. Sammy Shank, My yes. Bad. 
It's okay. And uh, you see the 28A of Alan Durham also sitting there. Some top wing damage to the 92 car there. Definitely a tough break on the restart. Rabble was able to pick off Seacrest for second, but that will, the caution will negate that pass. Right. We'll see a replay here. Yeah, Corey, there you see Corey out of shape. Sammy Shank, yeah, with a head of steam coming off the bottom of turn two, got into him. 24 also getting involved there. Yeah. Really and then, yeah, Sammy got slapped pretty hard. I believe that's the 28A of Alan Durham who had nowhere to go. We'll see it. Well, he just caught Sammy's car. Caught the tail end of yeah, the off to the right sideways. The Durham's car on the hook, unfortunately, over there at the exit of turn two. Shank able to rejoin the back of the field. Right sideboard pushed in a little bit. That'll, that'll affect the handling of the car. But uh, as long as all the bolt-on components aren't bent or destroyed, pretty much keep going. And yeah. we'll get one more look at it. it. Looks like he climbed the 15's left rear tire and kind of got out of shape and tried avoiding the infield tires as well. And well everything see, happens so quick. Yeah, it's, it's just. Uh, oh, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and poor Alan, Alan Durham, you could see him just sliding into. He was on the brakes, I'm sure, as hard as he could be, trying to get slowed up, but just slid sideways and into Sammy over there. Sammy Shank able to restart, though. While Durham is in the infield, we are back to green. Dave Rabb, oh, got it wound up. He and Seacrest get together on the back chute. Oh, Seacrest across the racetrack. Oh. Wow. Wow, and that was a that was a hard hit. That was a 31. Noah Murky. Noah Murky. Louis Kern really, really hit Murky mid-flip. Top wing of Louis Kern's car being ripped off as well as Noah Murky's. Hopefully they're all okay down there. Yeah, Louis Kern is driving back to the pit area, so. Robert Shanneman involved. Watch this. That was wild. That's started, how it started. Started up front there with yep. Ricky Seacrest and David Ravel, and Shanneman piled in, Murky flipped, and that, man, what a hard hit there. 24, Louis Kern, wow. And then and Noah's wing landed on top of Kern's roll cage. Going to take another look. Good angle. Ravel and Seacrest, yeah, getting together, racing for second spot. Watch, Kern. man, Kern came in there with a full head of steam. Yeah. I mean, nothing you can do at that right, point. Right, right. Everything happened so quick and just hit flip a flipping murky. A break. I know Noah came into this one with a lot of confidence. He's a one-time feature winner this year. He's been running well all season long. Fourth in points. Yeah, yeah. Looking to have a real good run here in. Only 10 ahead of Clinton Hauser, who is fifth in points. That'll definitely hurt Noah's point night as Clinton is still out there. There he is, out of the car. Noah Murky standing and beginning to survey the damage. But the good news is he appears to be okay talking to the EMTs and the safety people over there looking at the front end there front end's bent probably more good. upset over the damage yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah the fact that his race is over here with just six laps complete see the EMTs talking to Noah there in turn number three go and get our the little service trailer out and load the car onto that to get off the track Another replay of it here. David Ravel gets a really good right. run. A really good run off the of turn number two. And just Ricky probably, Ricky Seacrest probably didn't know he was up there. And then, yeah, and Ricky just tangled. Just and I mean, Rick, uh, Ricky at that point is just across. out of the car's right. out of control. And He's came along back for the ride, across. right? Yeah. Wow. Louis Kern's head. Yeah. Man, that really whipped in that car when he hit Noah. Jeremy Eisenhower is plowing over. Yeah, an innocent victim. Murky. Oh, yeah. there's a wing in my way. <laughs> yeah. Anything to keep going. I right, mean, that, you get, right. You have to maintain your spot. So we are under yellow. They've got Noah Murky's number 31 on the trailer. 
Front end tore up pretty good there. Yeah. You can see Noah, viewing Noah sitting on the ground. I'm sure uh, the adrenaline's wearing off now and he's starting to definitely feel some pain right arm. You can see him sitting on the ground there in the, the pitch chute. Hopefully not too serious. Crew coming. Yeah, he's back, back to his feet now. Back to his feet. Definitely a hard ride, that, that's for sure. And a hard hit by Louis Kern. Now we are still stuck on lap number six, six complete. And because we have had consecutive yellow flags without completing another lap, these restarts are single file. Patrick Kern is the race leader, the number 16P. 21V of Dave Rabble is now the runner up. 88K of Kane Rogers, restart third. He started eighth. Good run going for him. Blumenshine fourth. And Corey Murky, Noah Murky's older brother, rounds out the top five as we go back to green flag racing in the turn number one. You see David Ravel get a really good run and power down the back straight away into the lead in the turn number three over Patrick Kern. He's going to be able to hold off Patrick Kern there, go back to the top side, get the momentum built back up, and he's going to drive away from Patrick Kern here on lap number eight. Blumenshine moves into third. Corey Murky into fourth. Keen Rogers falling back. Keen Rogers might have some problems. Yeah, there. it looked like he might be off the pace there. Now he's back in the gas. Looks lost, like he's having trouble getting through the corners. Lost several spots, yeah. Blumenshine now third. Corey Murky fourth. Racing nose to tail. Dave Rabble setting the pace. Off turn two. He is. Up to the wall. Was Rusty was uh, um, Kenny Wallace say high, wide, and handsome. High, wide, and handsome for sure. <laughs> running the fence like that. Definitely has the right rear right on the wall in each corner. And that's definitely tough to beat. That is something at this track, especially with the high banking, if you can keep your momentum build up along the wall, it's going to be tough to beat that strong of a car on the bottom. It definitely takes a good car and a good driver to beat it, beat that kind of momentum on the top. See Dave Ravel getting into the back of the field now, the 04 of Sam Borger. Borger running low on the track. Dave should be able to get around him right here. Oh, and they make contact a little bit. Tell you what, Patrick Kern is not letting Ravel get away, though. No, Patrick is, good. what, four to five car lengths maybe behind him on the straightaways. Really eats up a lot of ground in the corners. Because Patrick is right yeah. down around the yeah, those infield tires. See Blumenshine and Corey Murky battling for third and fourth there. Yeah, that's been happening. That, that's been going on for about 10, 11 laps. Yeah, ever since the restart, yeah. really, yeah. They've been going at it. Leaders back to turn number one. We are just about to see the halfway signal. Lap number 18 going on to the scoreboard. Cross flags shown to the leaders. Oh, and Blumenshine having... Some trouble negotiating Sam Borger there in lap traffic. Corey Murky really able to get right on the back bumper of him. See what he can do. Ooh. Yeah, he's going to use Borger as a pick. Good move by For Corey sure. Murky. Able to grab third here on lap number 19. Dave Ravel still leads this one. And Kane Rogers into the infield there on the back straightaway. Looks like the motor locked up. He will be done for the night. Dave Ravel still leading, though. Lap 21 of 35, gets underneath Sammy Shank there, through turns one and two and puts her a lap down. The wing, I'm sure, definitely not helping the handling on that car. Dave Ravel running the wall, able to keep his momentum up. He Absolutely really is, he's fun to watch, boy. He just probably never letting up, right? You can oh, no. pretty much yeah. floor it, keep it to the floor probably, in uh, these cars. Fifth gear, flat to the floor, <laughs> for sure. I get traffic would be the only thing that would, that would make him or, lift, yeah. Yeah, or if you have to change your line and run the bottom, right. I mean, that's when you about shift, but 
able to keep us. We'll see how he negotiates. Oh, wow. Wow. That got really tight. Yeah. Down. Sam Borger oh, gets he's around got a lane, him yep. and around Clinton Hauser off. <laughs> so just waits till he has that outside lane open. Patrick Kern getting by the 22 of Clinton Hauser and the 04 of Sam Borger as well. Leaders crossing the start finish line. Third place, Corey Murky was still on the back stretch. So he is about a half a lap behind. Yeah, Dave Rabble really setting a torrent. Unbelievable. Here. That car is so quick. Eight laps remaining. He's lapping up to sixth place at the moment as he goes under the 77 of Mike Kaiser through turns number three and four. And that bobble right there really let Patrick Kern close up in. Like you said, Rabble had to change his line there, go to the bottom to get by Kreiser. Just that little break in momentum was able to allow Patrick Kern to close back up. You see Rabble move back up to the top side now, get his momentum built back up yep. here for the final six laps. Yeah, this time by, it's going to be five to go. Dave Rabble out of Reading, the 21V. Out front, now he's motoring away because now Patrick Kern is having a tough time getting by the 77 of Michael Kreiser. Yeah, Kern hasn't changed his line to try and get around Kreiser on the bottom. He's staying committed to the bottom, which is not a bad thing, but when you're trying to catch the leader, lap traffic ahead of you isn't helping you out. How impressive is this run by Dave Ravel? He is closing in on fifth place, Jeremy Eisenhower, to put Eisenhower a lap down. There you see the wing of the 3S, Jeremy Eisenhower, just in front of the leader. Two to go, laps winding down, so Ravel may not put fifth place one lap down, but just the fact that he got there He's is very impressive. There, yeah. White flag in the air, final trip around the speedway. He's won the four-stroke Memorial race three times. This is his first win in the sportsman class in this event, Dave Ravel taking the double checkered flags. Patrick Kern, a solid runner-up finish. Corey Murky finishing third. Toby Blumenshine fourth. Jeremy Eisenhower hangs on for a top five finish. So a dominating performance by Dave Ravel taking him to victory lane. And we will be back to chat with the top three when we come back to Lanco's Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway. Don't you go anywhere, because up next, the Hyper Racing 600s. Does this get that monkey off your back, hopefully? No, of course no. not. I want that win, but what a race. It, it was fun all the way up to lap traffic, hoping he would get slowed down a little bit more, and it never happened. Yeah. But yeah, after the day I had today, I'll take second any day. All right, congratulations. Great job. Good to have you back here on the front stretch. Dave? Sportsman feature winner, Dave Ravel, here with us in victory lane. A three-time winner of the Memorial Race in the four-stroke division. Now you're a winner in the sportsman. Got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's been a long time since I was in this class uh, with a win, and there's no better night to come back and <laughs> get it on the Clyde. Uh, I just got to, I don't know what happened on the back stretch all in that big wreck back there, but all I know is I saw a hole, and next thing you know, everybody's coming up and pushing me up against the wall. So I hate to see it happen that early, but I'm just glad to be able to come back here and. Uh, Make it work on the high side. And you are fun to watch, boy, when that thing, you got it wound up running the fence. And I know that's the plan. When you have to change your line, though, does it feel pretty comfortable? Yeah, it still goes pretty good on the bottom. The only thing is I don't like to shift it too much because it likes to stay in one gear. And if you can keep it in one gear, it runs pretty good. Uh, I would say so. Congratulations, winner's decal. Dave Ravel in victory lane after our sportsman main event. A Clyde Martin Memorial.